Hello, back to Irish Football Fan TV. We are back after an eventful uh, two games of the Nations League, Finland and England. We obviously didn't do a final word for Finland, uh, and we haven't done our England one net. So myself and Tom, we're going to do a full uh, recap of the window as a whole. And uh, I suppose we'll start off with the Finland game. Uh, the lineup there: Quiven Keller, um, then it was Matt Doherty, uh, and Callum O'Dowd uh, at fullback. Um, you had Liam Scales and Nathan Collins, and then you had um, Mikey Johnston and Festia Bazelli on the wings in midfield. Josh Cullen, uh, Jason Knight, and then um, you had Sammy Smollix and uh, Sammy Smollix and Evan Ferguson to to finish the line up there and uh yeah i suppose did you did you think anything of that of that line of going into it I mean, matt Doherty was the one that a lot of people were kind of querying about i thought he deserved a chance considering we were light in that position yeah definitely probably a lot of people weren't expecting matt Doherty to you know come back into the fold so soon after being kind of dropped um after the last window uh festy was a bit of a surprise coming in seeing as all the word was that he was going to be injured and he'd picked up a knock and I think a couple of people were kind of surprised that he had started, but glad he did, obviously. Uh, back four, probably other than other than Matt Doherty, probably what we expected. I think a lot of people expected Odell to play left back and then, yeah, Collins and Scales, Kelleher obviously in goal. Uh, Cullen and Knight in midfield did well in the last campaign against uh, Greece and Finland, so no surprises there. Uh, Smodix and Ferguson up front, I think we're all hoping that that kind of turns into the you know, duo going forward, especially going into the future. Um and yeah, other than that I thought it was, you know, what I expected of the lineup. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Well I suppose um you've done all the homework on it while I was running around and, and, and moving countries and stuff like that uh, in the process. So I suppose we'll we'll go into it and kinda of to dissect the game before we, we move on to the England game that so fire it away. Yeah, like first twenty minutes or so of the Finland game was dull enough. Uh I thought we did look good going forward, the sort of uh counter-attacking way that we were playing we, we caught them a couple of times light at the back and Smodix and Ferguson and Johnston looked pretty good going forward and then eventually Smodix scores an offside goal uh goes around the keeper and looking looking back it was very tight I, I was really sorry for him at that stage because he, he's kind of in that position where he's gone a couple of games without a goal for Ireland and it just feels like if he gets one he's gonna you know score loads and he's just that kind of player but yeah, it was sick for him after that because it was a great... He went around the keeper and it was a great finish. So, I don't know what you thought about that. Yeah, well, I think maybe the pass goes a little bit under the radar there because, you know, it was an excellent pass by Evan Ferguson showing he's not just a goal scorer and he can create chances. I mean, it was it was just that slight bit offside, but it was offside. So, you couldn't really argue with it. But I think, yes, uh, the the evidence was there was there that they, they could be a good duo because Sammy can make those runs in behind and Evan can also be one of those players who it's not really his strong point at the moment but definitely I think that's an element of his game he'll be kind of working on is that back to goal um and then kind of playing in players as well so I think it's it was good to have kind of the, both of them playing together more centrally um and I know we'll probably touch on it in the England game that they obviously weren't but I think against nations like Finland I think it's pivotal we have our inform players uh you know playing in those positions and you can see why like they're, they're dangerous when they're together and they strike fear into the opposition how long have we been waiting to hear uh or say that about it, an irish team you know yeah so i suppose it was a positive enough start the next 10 10 or 15 minutes we were really under pressure then uh there was a couple of times where our midfielders i thought especially johnson and maybe josh cullen were giving the wall away very cheaply around the edge of our own box and i suppose in our in our own half in general and uh, we only barely got away with that after half an hour. I think Robin Lord nicked the ball off uh, Johnston just on the kind of left-hand corner of our box and goes in and hits the, the far post to Kelleher's goal and he's beaten and we just we just get lucky that it hits the other side of the post. Then uh, they cross a ball in maybe two or three minutes after that to Kalman who just heads wide. And then a few minutes after that again, Antman gets the ball in the box after a Finland counter-attack and he also hits the post so that was a great block by Nathan Collins though wasn't it yeah yeah but I suppose we had to absorb a lot of pressure there and probably it, it really kind of exposed our sort of lack of bodies I don't know if the, if that's what you call it in the midfield but it seemed like we were just getting overrun for about 10 minutes there yeah I think that was the big thing online as well is that we you know they were just cutting us open through the midfield and I think that's how a lot of people kind of felt with um 
with our midfield you know I, I did think it was a great challenge by Collins to to deflect it onto the post but yeah we were up against I think Mikey Johnson uh, was just dispossessed trying to do something silly in his own half and, and, and gets dispossessed and uh, we're a nation that can't afford to kind of I suppose make those sort of errors in those positions and I know again I, I said we're going to come to it but like Smodix was doing similar stuff against England uh, just putting unnecessary pressure on ourselves now I understand if our back's against the wall or whatever but against this Finland side we, we should really be um, we rode our luck at times definitely um, but I think as well as that we've also in the last number of years we've been a side where we have not really rode our luck in terms of we've done all the right things and other teams have wrote their look and they you know we've hit the post or the keepers made a great save or the keeper get man of the match and we don't score now we're winning games and we're winning games ugly um i i, I don't want to be too harsh on us like because people are saying oh well we didn't you know we're getting cut open but then ultimately i know we're going to dis- discuss the whole game but we ultimately won the game so t- at times you, you can ride your look and then you have a good goalkeeper like kelleher um he's going to help you as well yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I think for the longest time, I've been saying, I think you've been saying as well, that we don't really care about winning pretty or even playing pretty if it means you know winning football matches. And uh, that's what Finland ended up being. But I suppose after that, uh, we rode our luck, as you said, for about 10, 15 minutes there. And after that, I think it was the 40th minute where a ball came in uh, from a corner. Matt Doherty arrives late at the back post and just misses uh, with a header. Uh probably just what he needed at that time like just from a confidence point of view if he had to hit that home he, he probably should have to be fair but uh we get away with it because in the 45th minute just before half time uh mikey johnston goes on a great run down the left side uh really you know typical kind of mikey johnston run where he's you know thinking and diving through all sorts of defenders and clips one to the back post and evan ferguson just rises up at the back and nods at home and so after kind of not playing as well as we would have hoped for against Finland at home. We end up going in at the half one nil up. Yeah, I was actually down getting a hot dog. Uh, I always miss our goals. <laughs> I always do um, because I'm either going to the toilet or I'm, I'm down uh, getting a hot dog or some food um, just for half time. Like and uh, yeah, we saw it on the screen. Heard the cheer and then we looked on the monitor um, and we saw it, you know Ferguson scored. It was a great goal. Look, it, that's that's what we need from our wingers, our wide players, is to you know get wide, clip balls into the box and, and get our strikers on it, whether it's Adam Eda or whether it's Evan Ferguson. We've scored a couple of goals. Like that. I remember Smallbone whipped the ball in for Adam Eda and he scored in the Aviva in one of our last kind of five, four or five games. Um, I, It was in the summer, I believe. Hungry, I think. Was yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah, that was the one, yeah. So, like, it, it's just, like, getting the service into the box. It has been better over recent uh, games and stuff like that and i think that's where we need to be is still supplying the strike it's good to see evan getting a goal and it was an important goal you know taking that goal into half time then it, it was huge for us because you know you mentioned there we hit the po- uh, they hit the post twice they also the keeper made a save so they were uh they were coming on strong against us and we we, we well we we held it we dug in well yeah. Um and, and we got to half time. So I suppose I'll ask you, uh, what were your half time thoughts at one 0 You were you were there. Were, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, n- not exactly delighted with the performance, I suppose overall, but definitely happy to be going in one 0 up. It feels like we've been on the wrong side of them sort of uh of that equation over the last couple of years, yeah, where 100%. you know maybe we're actually playing well, but we go in at the half or finish the game losing the match, and uh the exact opposite in this game. Um not exactly chuffed about how we were playing especially defensively i thought we were shipping way too many chances and kind of very loose at the back but uh dug in as you said and got in there with the lead and as well like like you mentioned it's great to see evan ferguson continue to start scoring goals for ireland as we hope that he he does turn out to be you know up there in the sort of goal scoring charts when it's all said and done in his career uh these are the kind of games i, I know people mightn't say Finland's a big game, but it, it was an important match to win, especially considering how the group is panning out. So definitely happy to be going in one 0 up. Yeah, just on a, a word on Evan. Obviously, we you know by the end of his Ireland career, I'm sure he wants to get close to Robbie Keane's record. Whether he breaks it or not is a is a whole different thing. But to get anywhere near 68 goals would be would be a huge achievement for him, and I think he's good enough to to get near it. Anyway, if he if he if he continues to develop like he is. And the way speak people speak about him, 
um, he's only going to get better. And look, he's still only 19, or yes, he's only still 19. He might even be 18. Um, but he's still, you'd know actually, you played against him, so he's probably 19. I'm, I'm 20. He was the same age group as me, but I think he was a little bit younger. So I'm yeah, 19, 19, 19, 20, yeah. Yeah, I'd say he's 19. But that's what I mean. Look, he's got a, he's got a huge uh, career ahead of him. It's great to see. But yeah, back into the second half then. Second half, yeah, we come out, no changes. Uh, Probably not exactly dominating the game, but in control, definitely. Uh, and then the 74th minute, kind of out of the blue, uh, comes from a corner, the ball gets cleared, and then uh, thrown back into the box. And Evan Ferguson, uh, like we're just talking about him, but he comes out with his arm sort of in the air. I don't know, it, it, it I didn't see it at the time, but looking back... I saw it. I actually was sitting beside um, Paul O'Hare, who works right. for the uh, Mirror, I think. Um, and I just said to him, I said that's a handball that the ref's checking that like he was he was, he was doing that with his ear i said i i think that's going to be given as a handball i think that's going to be checked and it was a couple of minutes later it wasn't an instant thing it took about two minutes to get you know and then they went back and then they obviously went to the monitor and, and gave the penalty for it but i don't think a lot of people in the stadium knew what they were giving it for but i definitely from where i was sitting in the media i could see um it directly hitting a hand and um, the minute you know Someone said, I imagine someone said that's a potential penalty or whatever, and obviously it was given. And then, yeah, I suppose it's a bit foreign for people in Ireland kind of going through these VAR checks, especially in stadiums. <laughs> it's still kind of a new thing, even though, unless you're Shamrock Rovers fans, because I think they have it with, yeah, with the your, conference league. Yeah, uh, yeah, so it was a little bit strange to be in the stadium. It's, it's kind of confusing to know what's going on. Um, we obviously heard the, the calls for handball, but you, you hear calls for handball in every corner almost, so we weren't sure how credible or not that was. Looking back on the replay, it was probably a penalty. And uh, after that, Poe and Paolo steps up. And Kelleher, we talked about him in the preview. He's been playing, a, I'd say it, it's not an exaggeration to say a world-class level for Liverpool right now. And he, yeah. he, he pulls a save out of the bag and keeps us 1-0 up. And I don't know if you want to talk about Kelleher for a second. Yeah, I mean, the double save, it, it, it deserves a huge mention um, because it was a match-winning double save. It really was. Like... Um, no getting away from it and obviously he was brave then to put his head in for the for the rebound you know to i think he took a knock to the head from that because he had to kind of put his head in among a, a lot of bodies and stuff so great save um no more than he deserved and he made up for the for the greece game then in my opinion by doing that and hamer said it after the game as well it's like you know you were delighted to see him doing well and you know that that's made up for the for the error in greece even though that game was pretty much lost anyway you know and yeah, Poi and Paolo, uh, he missed that penalty, but it probably wasn't the only chance he missed. He had a couple of chances in the second half that could have got Finland back into the game. Again, like we said in the first half, kind of loose at the back, shipping chances that we probably shouldn't be to Finland. But yeah, riding our luck and, and defending well at times. Um, uh, Poi and Paolo, like I said, missed a couple of chances in the second half. Then Sammy Smodix, uh had one about 10 minutes left in the game. He broke down the right-hand side and kind of just went himself and pulled a good save out of Herdecki. Uh, other, than, other than that, there wasn't too many good big chances. Uh, substitutions in the 76th minute, we brought Dara O'Shea, Finn Azaz, Jason Malumbi on. Uh, and then the 85th minute, we brought on Tom Cannon and Roy Manning. Uh, I don't know what you thought out of them subs. I thought Finn Azaz came on and made a pretty big in impact on the game. Yeah, he done well when he came on. I thought uh, there was some nice bit of play. It was a him and Tom Cannon. The back heel, uh, you know, good piece of play getting us up the pitch at one stage. But uh, ultimately, uh, you know, the, the subs didn't do a lot for me. It was the right subs at the right time. And they saw us, they saw the game out for us. And, you know, I think Hamer's quite good at actually his in-game management in, in that sense where he knows when to bring subs on at the right time. Um, <laughs> Again, I, I'm going to mention the England game. He, prob he probably got it wrong in that one. But... I think so far up to that point he had gotten most of the subs right again the the first win in Finland thought he got the subs right in that one and then uh, in this occasion it was just to see the game it wasn't for anything pretty or anything like that it was just right this is uh to you know this is just to give some of them a chance uh, maybe just to please a couple of fans Ryan Manning coming on you know a bit late in the game to be bringing him on what's the point you know you know Dar O'Shea was carrying a knock but then he started the next game so yeah, it's uh, yeah, just not nothing really to write home about in terms of the subs. Other than that one kind of good move, as I said. But I, I like his ass, and I, I'd like to see him kind of replicate the form at Middlesbrough for uh, for Ireland soon. And he's only had a couple of games, in fairness. 
yeah, so so that was the Finland game, really. Uh, probably not the best performance overall, but like we've been saying for a couple of years now, we don't really care about the performance as long as we win matches. Uh, there definitely was. It wasn't all like kind of. It was a lot of negative discussion around the game a- afterwards, like kind of doom and gloom about the sort of performance and giving up so many chances and really riding our luck at times against Finland. But I thought there was positives to take out of it. I thought Evan Ferguson and Sammy Smodix up front is starting to look like a pretty good partnership. Uh, Kelleher, obviously, we know that he's such a good keeper and bailed us out of so many you know moments in that game. Uh, I actually thought, not many people were saying it, but I thought Josh Cullen played pretty well as well. Yeah, he did. He's like a little bull tedger getting himself uh, around everywhere. Um, I like Josh Cullen, but I think he needs someone next to him on a, on a, a steady player on a regular basis. Someone who's not afraid to get on the ball and turn and try and dictate. And maybe Andrew Moran is that player in the longer run. I don't know, but uh, yeah, he did, do, he did do well. So did Jason Knight. Obviously got his yellow card, so he was ruled out. I think he was a big miss against England, but I'm sure we're going to talk about that now. Yeah, so I kind of suppose some of the takeaways from the Finland game were that even if it was kind of slightly better opposition, then we would have lost that game. And uh, we come to the England game and it, it wasn't, uh, I don't think anybody was expecting us to come out and, you know, get a result against England. That's not what we've been saying for the longest time. Especially at Wembley, yeah. Yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're not asking for Ireland to go out and beat England, France, you know, Spain, these kind of teams. But give all, you know, put in effort, you know, be solid at the back, don't be easy to play against. And in the first half of the England game, I, we'll, we'll mention the, the couple of changes that he made to the team, but I thought we actually played really well defensively. And, yeah, and we'll, do, we'll do the team first yeah, and then yeah, we'll yeah. go into that. So I, I have this team here in front of me. So we had Kelleher and goal. He went with a very kind of defensive minded uh, team with O'Shea as uh, the right back, um, Mark McGuinness on his full debut, and then uh, Scales and then he had O'Dowd uh, as the, so he also had Nathan Collins as like a sitting midfielder and then he kind of had Cullen, Malumbi, Ebizelli, Ferguson and Smollocks. It was a kind of a weird uh, I would say 5-4-1 or e- not even maybe 5-5 five, five, or sorry yeah 5-4-1 it would have been uh, with, with Smollocks being like a, a winger and Festi being a winger and then you had Collins in front of the defence and yeah, sorry, we can continue on from that point. I don't know what your thoughts were initially on the team. You can go into that if you if you like. No, yeah, it it was kind of hard to figure out based on just looking at the lineup what way we were actually going to set up on the pitch. Uh, turned out to be that Nathan Collins was playing this sort of half mid half midfield doing the Paul midfield. McGrath. Yeah, and he he ended up. I was watching him. He kind of just followed Harry Kane around the pitch, like th- the way Harry Kane likes to drop into midfield and collect it kind of deep, and. Like we seen in the first half, he he took Harry Kane out of the game. I thought, aside from him, I thought our pressure off the ball was brilliant. We didn't give them a second, and they felt like really rattled after the first half. You could see them sort of giving out. Jude Bellingham was kind of going mad at times. Uh, we we seemed to get under their skin. Harry Kane and Kyle Walker were sort of lashing out at moments. But you know that's that's the kind of performance that you want to see against the bigger nation. That we're we're not going to be easy to play against. We're not going to be nice to play against. Uh, we. Not only did we defend pretty well, but we actually caused them some problems going back the other way. Uh, we'll get on to some of the some of the penalty shouts that that came, especially the first one. In my opinion, was huge. Stonewall. I, yeah, I'm not sure how that hasn't even been checked or sent. The well, was it? Well, I, I'm sure you were watching it on RT. Yeah. In the stadium, like it was a lot of us weren't aware of it, and then a few people had it up on Twitter, and because of the location. You know what I mean? You can't watch ITV in Dublin. Yeah. It was like that, but you can't watch RTE in London. So you couldn't actually see the thing. And I, I think I, we were obviously in WhatsApp, so I had to get someone to try and send it to me. And then I saw it by half time, say. So I didn't see it at the time. So that was quite frustrating uh, to see that that was a blatant penalty. And uh, the fact that they obviously get a penalty later on as well, uh, it would annoy you even more. But that one for me was, was, was a stonewall penalty. And as you say, uh, about us frustrating them and stuff like that. There was a moment, I think it was Callum O'Dowda on the left hand side and he gets absolutely taken out of I can't remember who who the player was who took him out, but um from that Bellingham got booked and that it was it it wasn't ever Um it might have been who was it? Uh it was it could have been Hall. Oh maybe, yeah. Hall or Livermento, I think. Uh but basically they come running over and smash into 
uh, I think it was O'Dowd when he kind of done a little turn, and then at that stage they were quite rattled. Yeah, definitely. And and you mentioned the first one. It, it was even me watching it on TV. I, I I couldn't quite make out that it was a penalty. It was only after seeing the replays that you see Evan goes past him, and then Gay he kind of pulls him back by the shirt and drags him down. Uh, the second one, then again, the ball gets played over the top. Uh, looks like it's going to be dealt with fairly easily by England at the back, Kyle Walker, I think it was, and Sammy Smoddix just kind of nips in behind him and gets the wrong side of him. There's a sort of. A, a I don't to, think that one was a pen. A looking back. Yeah, it, it's definitely not as stonewall as the uh, Evan Ferguson gay he won, but there's definitely contact. Uh, but there I think if 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 Kyle Walker doesn't head that ball, yeah, then you could say. It, but the fact he's already made the contact with the ball, I know. But the, for me, I look. I don't know if it definitely wasn't a for sure penalty. I don't think, but there's definitely a claim for it because he's he's. It's a claim all day, them. but but if it was given against us, you'd be. You would be to be fair. Anyway, we we move on from that. Uh, Liam Scales picks up a kind of silly yellow card where he kind of picks up the ball and runs away with it. I think it was and comes back to bite him in the second half. Yeah. The, the, like the, the the ref was a bit card happy at that stage, but uh, and I don't think he was doing us any favors in any way. Like he might have booked a few of their players and stuff like that, but decisions were definitely not going our way. And uh, that was the worry probably in this uh, at half time is that yes, we've defended quite well. Yes, we've we've counterattacked well. Um, Ferguson wasn't getting a lot of service, but he was still making. Uh, he was doing well with what he was getting. Uh, Festy was doing some good runs down the right hand side, and overall, I would have given the. From a game plan point of view, I would have given us a 10 for how we did the first half. Yeah. And it's completely unfortunate then uh, from the manager's perspective how the the, the, the game goes after that, uh, after the first 10 minutes of the second half. Because obviously England picked up the pace a bit uh, and you could see that. Bellingham went up another level. Harry Kane went up another level. Um, and we just, uh, yeah, I think scales stay on your feet there I don't think he needs to dive in whether he gets turned or not it, look it's easy for me to say I'm not playing the game at, at that level so I can't turn around it. you put your on a yellow card be smarter about it just try and stand up in the box like Jude Bellingham is, is a world class player but I don't I don't really see him that much taking on players in the box and skinning them you know he he's kind of like he's if you give him enough space he's got quite a good shot on him but if you block the space and just get tight there i don't think he, I, and i also think you can delay him so he doesn't get the shot on but just diving in and then allowing him to do the cut and obviously his momentum then he was always going down gets the second yellow again you got to think i'm on a second yellow you need to be more disciplined there and not get sent off uh, i love liam scales i think he's a great lad and everything like that and it's not like a witch hunt or anything like that but that definitely turned the game on its head yeah and in the second half i think all that positivity that we've seen from uh, Festy down the right side, especially, I think, the sort of role that Collins was playing. I thought Mark McGuinness had a great debut, especially in the first, first half. half yeah. He was very solid. Um, yeah, second half, Liam Scales, the penalty, as you mentioned. I do agree. I, I think he, he's got to stand up there, but I think it was more like a sort of confusion thing. I, I think he like lost his foot and didn't know where the ball was, and then kind of it was just an instinct thing. You could see instantly on his face that he knew that you know it was a penalty. There was no complaints about it but it was just the irony of that after the two shouts that yeah, we had in exactly. the first half I'd agree that I thought the referee look I I'm not one to normally complain about referees I don't think I'd like to think I, I can step away from it a little bit but I thought he did us no favors in the first half and uh comes back in the second half and instantly kind of get 51st minute he gives away or gives them a penalty and also red card so from there uh the game kind of flips on its head uh I think yeah, totally self-destruct. In the space of six minutes, we gave up three goals. Yeah, it was the second one was a confusion between Nathan Collins and Josh Cullen tackling each other, and then Anthony Gordon gets on the end of the cross, and and makes no mistake. And I don't know. It was like for me at, at that stage. I I don't know if you, I'm sure there's people who playing FIFA on this and obviously FIFA is so realistic these days and you know when you keep you, you know when you're just beating someone and they force quit <laughs> it's almost like that where you just kind of you, you keep scoring next minute that music keeps coming on 
Yeah. He's scoring. I don't know. You ever played it where you scoring yeah. at Wembley and yeah. it was just like that? You can feel it coming. He's going to yeah. leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was almost like that. That's what, kind of what it felt like sitting there and I was, and the music kept coming on. Everything was so like FIFA in Wembley because it was my first time there. Even the announcers, the way they talk, everything's so like I, I actually couldn't get over how lifelike it was. I thought I was in a game of FIFA at that point and obviously Gordon gets the goal and he's wheeling away and the music is going and you know the English crowd is up because at that up until that point we had kept them quiet because we gave them nothing to sing about we gave them nothing to shout about they were totally frustrated totally nullified um, doing that for 90 minutes was always going to be difficult for 11 men but for 10 men it, yeah look we for me I would have would have almost done something there I, I probably would have taken off uh, someone quicker in that position you know Nathan Collins going back in straight away that was fair enough but then bring on someone to help shore things up there instead of just keeping it as it was I think Hamer was just trying to get his head around things and before we know it we were 3-0 down um, the, 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 the third goal then who was uh, Jared Connor Gallagher oh Connor Gallagher yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah like you said it, it was it was always going to be hard enough playing against England, even with 11 men. We, we realised that the sort of talent gap is there and we need to do everything we can to sort of uh, level the playing field, whether it's, you know, tactics, how we act on the pitch, how we play. Uh, so going down to 10 men was never going to, you know, do us any, any favours because after that it was just a complete capitulation, really. It was, yeah, three goals in six or seven minutes, I think. Uh, Harry Kane, Anthony Gordon, Conor Gallagher and the... It felt like, like you were saying, it just wasn't going to stop there for a minute. Um, we then bring on subs in the 67th minute. We brought on Finn Azaz, Troy Parra and Ryan Manning. Did you think they were the right subs at the time? Or? They made no impact. You know, Andrew Moore came on later and thought he, yeah. he made a bit more of an impact. But it's not their fault. It's, it's always, it's never easy coming in when you're 3-0 down. Like, what are you, what are you supposed to do? If we had, we got maybe a... a a goal early on when they came on, maybe we'll have a bit of a go. But you got to remember, it's England. They've, they're in the Euros final. They've been, you know, in finals, semi finals the last number of years in all the major tournaments. So it's no disgrace to lose 5 0. They don't want to lose 5 0 to them. But like, we made it easy for them at that point. And everybody said it. The players said it. The manager said it. No excuses. We just, it was, it was, it wasn't good. Yeah. it's a shame because we had done the first half so well so when you're you know you're kind of comparing the two halves it was like two different teams to play it you know even though obviously we know we finished the game with, with, with a different side but like you would imagine that they would have been able to hang on but the the red card killed us and that's there's no exaggeration yeah I, I agree like at, at that stage when you're bringing on these players off the bench there's very little that you can do when we're already 3-0 down there's not much of an impact they're going to make uh, towards the result anyway from that stage. Uh, yeah, if it was Finland or something, you go, okay, maybe. Yeah. But if England, you're just not going to. So then the 76th minute, Jared Bowen adds a fourth. And then three minutes after that, Taylor Harwood Bellis uh, scores a header in the 79th minute. So that, that was 5-0 in the end. Uh, like you said, it was so disappointing because of how impressed we all were by the first half performance. I didn't expect us to come out and play that well at all and so for us to then uh kind of instantly throw all that away in the second half was really disappointing and uh i don't know what how you feel about coming away from this like i do agree that it there's no shame in losing to england it was just how we kind of shot ourselves in the foot it wasn't by how good england were it wasn't by you know they didn't overwhelm us with their quality or anything we really just shot ourselves in the foot uh you know, after how well we played in the first half. Uh, so, are you disappointed by the result, or are you coming away with positives from the first half? Or yeah, I would have I would have uh, positives to be fair uh, on the first half. But the the thing that I think fans shouldn't uh, you know cloud their judgment. You shouldn't let this five 0 result reflect on the whole campaign. It it was better than the last campaign. We won games against teams that we were expected to beat in Finland. Greece are a good side. That's what, what people want to say. They beat England at Wembley. People forget that. Um, so, yes, I think people expect us to lose to England. Maybe 1, maybe 2-0, two 2-1. Two like the game in the Aviva. Uh, I think we were actually more... Uh, we were better in the first half at Wembley in, than we were in the whole of the yeah. 
game against England because England had chances. Keller made seven saves or something in that game. So, yeah, I think we shouldn't be coming away from this. Fans are very reactive. Fans want, you know, especially like it's just the way some fans are. They, they just want to sack managers all the time and think that some new fella's going to come in and then he doesn't start doing well. Sack him, sack him. He's no better than Stephen Kenny. Sack him, sack him, sack him. I think Halgum's been shown enough for me over the course of this uh, this campaign that he can identify the problems and that he can try to fix them. He deserves at least one more campaign to try and get it right. Um, we've had two good results against Finland, which will give us positives because we were struggling to get wins in the Nations League. He's got two wins. Um, and look, we were probably maybe unlucky against Greece, you could say. But uh, ultimately, I think Greece are a better side than us at the moment. I think they're in a they're they're in a more kind of progressive position uh, with their team and stuff like that. We still have, and I th- and I think this is actually a key point. Is and I said this actually on the day is that we we didn't really have any experience on the pitch at international level or any, at a high level at all. I mean, you're kind of looking at Nathan Collins, Brentford fighting relegation every year with Burnley, with Wolves, with Brentford again. You know he's con- that's that's been his level so far. I'm not saying that that is his level. I think he can go on to do bigger and better things than he will. But what I mean is, if he's he's your captain, and then you're looking at the uh, the rest of the team like Evan Ferguson's, then your next man who you're you're kind of go to. He's at Brighton. He's struggling to get in. He's had his injuries, and he's only going to get fit now. And then after that, you've got Keller, who's the second choice keeper at Liverpool. Albeit he's still a really good player, but he's not the man at Liverpool. Uh, and then you look you look around, I mean, Darrow Shea, Ipswich again, he's been in a lot of teams that have been fighting relegation. Um, O'Dowd is not a left back. You know, o- O'Shea's not a right back, but he's done well there. Uh, McGuinness done okay. There was nothing that, that made me kind of come away from it going, he, he couldn't be an international defender. Uh, he's a good option to have as well there. But again, I'm just talking a Shane Duffy, a Seamus Coleman, even a Matt Doherty, who has that international experience of a lot of caps under their belt and have played for Ireland under a number you know know when to sit in dig in when you're down to 10 men and stuff like that I just thought we lacked that little bit of nets but um, overall looking at the campaign I you know we've got a playoff to play now because we won our games and Finland got relegated so I think it's not huge positives but it's small steps yeah I, I agree with a lot of that Um, yeah look we're not delighted about the performance against Finland but we no. got the three points uh, but a win is a win, and yeah. I, but I, but I will say, Tom, sorry, is that momentum in football is huge, and you, t- <laughs> I think if we if we had got the results the other way around, like coming off the back of the Finland win, say instead of the England loss, then you're kind of going, all right, well we got a win, and we're kind of, but the fact that the two games were before, uh, two losses, then it didn't help, um, kind of momentum, but I think psychologically the win against Finland away was huge. That the fact the players had the belief then because a lot of them just know losing in international football, but for that I think then that was key to then switching the kind of mentality in that sense, and I think that's again what we showed in the home game. Obviously, this game didn't go our way, and it's never nice to lose to England because of who they are and the rivalry and everything like that. Look, the England fans are more rattled than us. I mean, we haven't haven't stopped commenting on our social media, and they've won five nil. If we're they're not bothered by us, like if we beat. If we were Eng- English and we'd be Ireland, we, I'm not so sure we'd be going around commenting on English fans' pages or whatever, you know, or uh, Irish fans' pages going, oh, ha, ha, we're better than you or whatever. Like, we know you're better. Like, uh, half your t- half your team play for the best team player or best teams in the Premier League or whatever. You have a really good side there. And uh, and they were missing a lot of players as well. So, like, look, if we had a 11 men, I'm sure that that game is either 1-0, 1-1 or 2-1. I think, I think we we would have got a goal, and I think I I think I can't predict the future, but I just think we would have been more in the game than out of it than what we ended up with. Yeah. So yeah, like like you kind of said, I actually thought that first half of the England game is probably as impressed as I've been with an Ireland team in the whole time the Hamer's been in in charge. Uh, it's a disappointment how how kind of the second half went, and yes, that's a tough pill to swallow, especially against England, but. This is a team that's on the build. Uh, like you said, it would have been 
I think it would have been such a different kind of mood around the place if those results had to come the opposite way around. I 100% agree with you that that winning sort of becomes a habit. Like it's been said, confidence. Yeah, it's been said a couple of times, but this kind of crop of Ireland players have never experienced sort of big wins in you know big away days, important games in the Viva. They haven't experienced that. So just getting any kind of wins, which have been hard to come by over the last couple of years, under their belt can only be a positive thing. Yes, it's a difficult pill to swallow against England, but huge amount of positives, I think, to take out the first half. And I definitely I wouldn't be jumping the gun at all on, on sacking Hamer or whatever. I think that's that that's ridiculous to people saying that. I think we need to give him a chance. This is a team that's on the build. And I, I'm looking forward for the playoff and future campaigns going forward. Yeah, I'm just going to... Because Dan McDonald had, had uh, tweeted out earlier who we could potentially be playing. So... Barring an unexpected UEFA ruling around Kosovo situation now confirmed that Ireland's potential playoff opponents are Slovakia, Kosovo, Bulgaria or Armenia. Uh, draws on Friday and it's a two-legged tie in March. So is there anyone in that or is there anyone of that bunch that you would fear coming up against? Obviously we know we, we played Slovakia not that long ago and we, we lost uh, Stephen Kenny's first game and remember that that's still a game that probably gives us nightmares. Not particularly out of that list that you named. I can't underestimate any of them, but it's interesting, like, even your conversation with Henry Winter, it's interesting the sort of perception of this Ireland team from outsiders. Like, I think a lot of people talk down on this Ireland team, but there's some seriously quality players in this team that can carry us to wins against smaller opposition. And, you know, we've sort of... Our mindset in Ireland has been like, oh, we're just going to lose every game now. Whereas these are... The t- every team that you just named there is a team that we should be go out, going out and winning. Similar to Finland. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'd have, I wouldn't be overly uh, scared of any of them. Having said that, we need to respect all of them and you know go into that with our best eleven. Hopefully. Yeah, I think and and look, football's a funny game. Like a lot can happen between now and then. You never know who might come back into the squad. Uh, you never know who could emerge. You know, Aaron Connolly could be going well at Sunderland and be brought back in and. What a ch- what a chance to make yourself a bit of a hero there, you know. Well, it's only a playoff to stay in the National League, but still, just to kind of come in and and I think you would get a a, a brilliant reception. So you think of maybe I'm a football romanticist uh, in that sense, but um, you just never know like who who could uh, could emerge between now and then. You know, Andy Moran could be a real figure and he could come in and and he could be one. You know, um, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting. March is always an interesting time because of the every team and every player is usually in a really good groove at that point um so it's, it's probably a good time to have the internationals because uh, you have your players coming in in, in form and stuff like that you'd imagine uh, everyone will have a few more premier league goals by that stage as well uh, and yeah hopefully some other players can emerge within squads uh, around the premier league and other squad and other uh, teams as well because we need we need as much players playing uh, in their positions as possible and i saw maybe potentially Dennis Serkin as well at Sunderland he could be an option if uh, if maybe he gets approached as well so look you just never know what our team could look like in March because international football does come on come along so um temporarily you know month like every every so every so few every few months or so sorry and uh it's yeah football is very it's always a, a, a a changing game in that sense is that you just never know who come around. I mean, Evan Ferguson two years ago just arrived on uh, our doorsteps playing for Brighton because of a couple of injuries and he was meant to go out and loan and all of a sudden he becomes this uh, star striker that we have and who starts for us. So, yeah, again, Troy could be banging them in for AZ and does he get his chance then? You just never know. Yeah, definitely. I, I think this is a team on the build. Let's not overreact on, you know, one disappointing result. I think... The future is hopefully bright and I think I, I have a lot of faith in Hamer and the way that he's kind of set up the team recently, at least what we've been trying to do. So I, I'm, I'm happy with going into the future with the kind of crop of players that we have and him at the helm. Yeah, absolutely. I think we'll leave it there. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, we leave it there. Anyway, um, anyone who's watching, thanks very much for watching. I hope you've left a comment down below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to us as well. Don't forget to give us a like and uh, yeah we'll speak to you all soon we're gonna have more content coming out over the next while as well so stay tuned for that and yeah take care and we'll speak to you soon